Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Chris. I'm going to continue on with the tutorial about making servlets and making an application that will make a request, HTTP request, to the servlet. Um, if you recall last time, I uh, had Postman making requests to the server that we created here that's running on a uh, Payara server. Uh, once I did a GET request to the specific URL that this is running on, Postman would basically display what was returned by the servlet. And if I did a GET request, I would see this in Postman. If I did a POST request, I would see this in Postman. Um, so what I'm going to do now is actually, instead of using Postman, I'm going to show a simple React application that's going to do the request itself. Um, you can ignore these commented out lines one for now. But uh, if you guys don't know, React is basically a uh, JavaScript library, a subset of JavaScript basically, where you can combine HTML and JavaScript and some specific unique React syntax to create very dynamic websites. It's something new to me. I'm still learning a lot about it, but uh, I wanted to show this tutorial with a simple React application. And, um, you know, I guess before I explain what's, uh, what I have in the code, I'm just going to kind of show it uh, working right now. So I have React running right now, and it when you actually have it running using npm start, and I'm going to explain about that a little bit later, it's going to run your local React code on a local host 3000 uh, URL on your PC on a web browser. And um, I have an HTTP POST request and a GET request similar to what we did with Postman, but I'm just kind of doing it here in, in the React app. And just so you guys see, I do have uh, the, the sample Maven web application running in a Payara server right now. So I already uh, compiled it, I already ran it, it's uh, actively running. So if I go real quick to my React app and do a post request and get requests, nothing happens. You just see this here. Why? It is due to uh, me violating a cores policy. You can see here these two error messages. Um, well, I, I brought up the browser log or browser consoles and it's already been there. But if I actually remove this, or I should say if I just clear it and click again, you'll see that I'm violating a course policy. I clicked or get request, same thing. And here's something important to note. Access to XML HTTP request to this URL, and that's basically my servlet running in my Payara server. Um, says that localhost 3000 has been blocked by the course policy because access control allow access control allow origin is present uh, on the requested resource. Or I should say, no access control allow origin is present on the requested resource. Basically, this is a kind of security measure that prevents one site with a, from one domain making direct requests to another site on a different domain. And when I say domain, my React app is running on localhost 3000, it's one domain. My servlet is running on localhost 8080, different domain. So it's getting blocked. Here's where that commented lines of code actually comes into play. If I uncomment these and I save the file, it should redeploy. Remember that access control, control allow origin text that was in the error message on the web browser? Access control allow origin. I'm basically adding it here to the code to the, to the actual response. I'm adding this header field, access control allow origin, and in here I'm specifying the exact domain that is allowed to make a request to this servlet. So now if I go back to this uh, React application I have here, and let me just kind of clear this out. I make a post request. Now you see this hello from Java Web Service post. The get request does hello from this Java Web Service get. And you can see that within my servlet code, that's exactly what is being returned by the servlet to the React app. So, very simple React application. Now I'm going to discuss uh, how to actually install it and uh, just to, I'll show you briefly the code that I have which is pretty simple because as you can see here the HTML output is really just this header field two buttons and a text field associated to each button so let me go back to my application or my uh, IDE here 
And uh, I'm not going to go over the steps from scratch since I have it already installed. But basically, to get React installed on your PC, um, I'm using here uh, Ubuntu Virtual Machine. You have to run these commands here sudo apt update, sudo apt install node.js npm. From there, per the React documentation, you should run this command. And this last portion here, my app is basically the name of the application, is going to create a project, a React project um, with that name on your in your uh, in your PC so I'll show you well, let me go back to here in a second um, just an FYI when I did this I actually had an issue um, I still couldn't create my folder using react but I did look online and I did have to run this other command here which is a global install of MPX after I did that I was able to run this command successfully you guys may not have to do this, but in case uh, you run into an issue running this the first time around, this is what I had to do to get around that. And uh, I changed the name of this actually for my app that I have for my app to just test HTTP. You can see that's what I have here. And that's it. It'll automatically create your, your React application. Everything here is actually automatically created when you do that. The only thing that's not created is this communication form which is basically what you see in uh, this browser over here so I'm not going to get into too much details of how react works but I'm just going to show you um, basically what I did so this app JavaScript file uh, basically um, it has some HTML code here all I did was basically replace what was existing with this bracket here it just looks like an HTML HTML um, you know special word it's basically the name of the communication form javascript or jsx file that i have over here so when this page gets rendered it's going to return this and it's going to return the html output that i actually have defined in this communication form javascript uh, jsx file here and if i go over here this is the html that's going to be rendered here's the communication form header Here's the form that's going to be handling the submit. Here is the post request button that I showed you. Here's the text area that's associated. This is basically handling the servlet response uh, for this post request. Here is the, the get request itself. And here is the, the guest request uh, text area that's going to handle the response. And one thing I actually noted here that I, I just noticed right now, and I hope you guys don't get confused, even though this is a post request and this is a get request, I actually do have the names kind of mixed up. Um, the name of this field is just, uh, I put get request in the one that actually is supposed to do the post, and I did post where it's supposed to be get or get. You can ignore that for now. Um, this doesn't affect what I showed you. But um, more on this React code that I have, I did define a couple of fields here. Um, or I should say variables. I have a server that get response and servlet post response. These are basically variables that's going to handle the string response from the servlet. Here I'm defining three methods. And as you can see, uh, the left and the right side are basically uh, the same. It's just React syntax to actually uh, declare a method for a class to be, then to before you actually use it so I have a send HTTP request uh, send HTTP post request and you can see that here and this is just the again the syntax to actually bind the method to your class it looks redundant saying this method name equals this method name dot bind this but that's just how it's supposed to work for react I have this HTTP GET request and handle submit, and you can see I have this GET request and handle submit. The one method you don't see here is the component did mount. Think of this kind of as a constructor. Um, I know this is the constructor here, but uh, let me rephrase that. Don't think of this as a constructor. This basically gets called when the render method is actually fully complete, and the render method. Or I should say, is uh, the actual HTML code that we have created over here. So you can see here, this submit button, I have associated, I have associated the on click to the send HTTP post request, and I have the get button 
associated to uh, the HTTP GET request. I'm sorry. The POST request button is associated to the POST request method. The GET request button is associated to the GET request method. And if I go to either method, you'll see here I'm defining the URL I'm trying to communicate with. And this is the same URL that the server is launched. Uh, and you can see here the end first service call. If I look at the web XML, first service call is associated to this test servlet class, which is actually the servlet name, I should say, and the class is, that's associated with is this first servlet Java file. And that post request basically is going to get routed here uh, to this post method and it'll receive the response back. And basically, this URL again is going to be posted, it's going to be um, used in this IX query. I'm defining this IX query as a post. I'm defining the actual URL endpoint that I was trying to connect to or communicate with. And then I have these two uh, methods that basically handle the successful request and the unsuccessful request. And basically what I do here is set the text response to the variable servlet post response, which I have defined here as a variable of this communication form React class. And then I have the exact same thing in this HTTP GET request. I'm defining the very same URL because this URL is handling post and gets. And you can see here it's the same thing as above except the type is a GET. And I'm just returning, or I'm, I'm basically putting the result of this, uh, basically, which is the response from the servlet. I'm assigning it to the servlet get response. And then in the code over here in the HTML output, you can see that I assigned the servlet post response and the servlet get response as the value of these two text areas. So when I make the HTTP request for a post, it's going to go to the Java server here. It's going to return this string text to my React code. That string text in this method here is going to be associated to this uh, field. And that is going to be then set to my servlet post response variable, which will then be displayed to uh, the browser. So that's pretty much it guys um it's very simple I, I probably took a little bit more time than i should have but just one other thing that uh, you're going to need to do to actually get this to work since i am using uh, jquery and a little bit of iax you do have to do a little bit more uh to the code to actually get that to work first off you're going to have to do an import of uh, the jquery just include this in your file and then also if you look over here, um, before you even do that, on the command line where you did all of these commands to install Node.js and to create your first uh, React app, basically you have to do import, um, let me see, actually, I'm sorry. You have to do, I don't have it here, or actually, yes, I do have it here, I'm sorry. Uh, you have to do this npm install jQuery. And then from there, you can add this to the top of your React file, and then you can make jQuery uh, code calls. And that's pretty much that, guys. Um, hopefully, it was somewhat informative. I um, hope I didn't take too long trying to explain this, but I wanted to show you guys a basic React app and, um, and how it actually works with the, the servlet that we created already. So thank you, guys. Bye-bye.